What's up folks, this is Rev Bari, Brown University Physics grad student. Today I welcome you to the next episode of the Physics GRE. Remember the Physics GRE is the entrance exam for most physics PhD programs here in the US and today I'm going to be solving a basics physics GRE problem. This is from the classical mechanics section of the physics GRE and it's from this book by Yoni Khan Anderson if you'd like to follow along. So let's go ahead and take a look at the problem and I encourage you to try the problem before you look at my solution but let's go ahead and uh, give this a shot. Okay so here's the problem. We have a box with mass capital M and a smaller box with mass lowercase m and they're stuck together as follows and there is a coefficient of kinetic friction between the big box and the ground mu1 and there is a coefficient of friction between the two boxes mu2. Now we apply a force F to the big box and the question is what does this applied force have to be so that the two boxes stay together. In other words so that this box doesn't for example slip off or fall off from the larger box. Okay so the question is what does the applied force have to be on the big box so that the small box stays with the big box. It doesn't slip off, it doesn't fall off, it doesn't get lost behind, right? So that's the idea. So we have to calculate what the applied force has to be. So as always, the first, uh, the first order of business is to draw a big diagram, okay, a good picture. So let's go ahead and do that. So let me draw a picture over here. Here is our large mass, capital M. Here is our smaller mass, lowercase m. And let's go ahead and draw some of the forces acting on these objects. Okay, so let me first draw them separately. Okay, let's draw their free body diagram separately. So here's the large mass and here's the smaller mass. And let's draw all the forces acting on them. First of all, both of these masses have gravity acting down on them, right? Everything has gravity down, acting down on it in a gravitational field, right? So for the big mass, the gravitational force won't just be capital Mg. No, it'll be capital Mg plus lowercase mg because, remember, we're assuming that these two boxes stay together, right? That's, we have to figure out the applied force so that they stay together. And if they stay together, then the weight of, of this box is not just going to be the weight of this box, but also the smaller box because they're attached together, right? So why don't I just factor out this G and write the total weight as M plus Mg, okay? Now for the smaller box, of course, its mass is just M, so its weight will just be Mg. So that's pretty straightforward. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's draw the normal force for both of these objects. Now the normal force on the big box, let's, that's just going to be upwards, right? And so that's going to be also... Let me erase this for now. We don't need this. So the normal force will also be capital M plus lowercase m times g, right? What about the normal force on the smaller mass? Well, the smaller mass is attached to the larger mass, and normal force is a contact force that arises from these two boxes being in touch. So the normal force acting on the smaller mass, we can kind of think of it as being in this direction, okay? Um, and of course there's also a contact force between these two boxes. This is the normal force but the contact force is separate. The contact force is the force of mass M on capital M. So that's in this direction. Force of lowercase m on capital M. And we also have the force of uppercase m on uh, lowercase m. And that will actually be this force right here. That is the normal force. Okay, so that is uh, that's that. Now, what is keeping this smaller mass attached to our bigger mass? Why doesn't it just slip off? Well, there must be the force of friction acting upwards on this, right? And specifically, what is the force of friction here? That's going to be mu one or mu two. It's going to be mu two because that's the coefficient of friction between the two boxes. Mu two times Fn, but we know what Fn is, it's Fm times uppercase M. Okay, so there's your force of friction. And let's see if we can figure out anything else. Are we missing any other forces? Well, we have an external force applied on 
our big mass over here. We also have a force of friction on our large mass, right? Because this table also has a force of friction, right? So what is this friction force going to be? Well, this is going to be mu1 times Fn. And Fn is this right here, mu1 m plus mg. Okay, so now it seems like we've got most of our forces in order. It seems like we've got everything here. So let's go ahead and collect some facts. Okay, let's take a look at the smaller mass first. It seems like that's a bit of a simpler system to analyze. If we look at our smaller mass, then we can immediately recognize that if the mass doesn't fall off, then the net force has to sum up to zero in the vertical direction, meaning that mu2 times this uh, normal force, let's say, or FMM, if we want to keep calling it that, must equal mg. Okay, that means if I solve for this contact force, FMM, this will be mg over mu2. Okay, so this is a useful fact which will be employed later on in this problem, but let's keep that in mind. And let's also calculate the acceleration of this small mass. The acceleration of this small mass will be its net force in the horizontal direction divided by its mass. Now, the net force in the horizontal direction, well, that's just this contact force or the normal force here. Okay, so FMM divided by M. But of course, we've just calculated what FMM is. It's Mg divided by mu2. Now, M and M cancel out, so that tells us that the acceleration of the small mass is g over mu2, okay? So that's the acceleration of the small mass, g over mu2. But if that's the acceleration of the small mass, that must also be the acceleration of the large mass because they have to stay together, right? This small mass cannot slip, it cannot fall behind, it cannot go ahead, right? It must have the same acceleration as this box. So the large box must also have the same acceleration, g over mu2. Okay, so let's keep that in mind while we solve for what the applied force must be so that they stick together. Okay, so now let's go ahead and analyze this large box, okay? So for the large box, what are we, what are we looking at? Let's look at the forces in the x direction, okay? So what is my net force in the x direction? So in the x direction, I have my applied force F, I have my contact force FMM, I have mu 1 m plus m g okay so that is all of my forces in the x direction so now let's take a look at fmm i already know what that is that's just mg over mu 2 okay mg over mu 2 and likewise i can also replace m over here right i can replace mg in fact because if i look at where are we? Let's take a look at this equation right here. If I look at this equation, then I can rewrite this mu m1g as mu m1, mu mg, and mu lowercase mg. Now, of course, I know what lowercase mg is if I look over here. Lowercase mg is just mu2 times fmn. Um, or I guess I'll, you know what, let's just keep it like that. Okay. So this is equal to ma, right? But we're not going to use the lowercase mass m here because this is the large box. So let's use uppercase m. Okay. So now if I solve for the acceleration here, that's going to be, let's see, f minus, or in fact, let's not solve for acceleration here. We already know what the acceleration is going to be. It's going to be g over mu2. So let's write g over mu2 over here. And now let's solve for our applied force here. So that'll be mg over mu2 plus mu1 m plus mg. And that is equal to my applied force. So now if I just go ahead and factor some things out, then I get that my applied force F must be, okay, g over mu2, the sum of the masses, plus mu1 m plus mg. And so now if I just factor out m plus mg, that gives me the following choice. 1 over mu2 plus mu1 for our applied force. And what is that if not choice D? All right, so that is how you solve this physics theory problem. And we'll see you in the next one.